The mission of the Pennsylvania Department of Education is to ensure that every learner has access to a world-class education system. Welcome to PDE Presents, a podcast series for lifelong learners that's dedicated to elevating voices across the Commonwealth. And now your host, Noe Ortega. Welcome to PDE Presents. I'm your host, Noe Ortega. PDE Presents is part of a broader strategy by the Pennsylvania Department of Education aimed at changing the way we think and talk about the mission and outcomes of education in the Commonwealth and across the country. Through this strategy, the department aims to shine a spotlight on the greater public good and collective mission of education. This podcast invites school leaders, educators, and other stakeholders to participate in conversations that unpack contemporary topics in education with a particular focus on equity. My guest today is Stephanie Sun, who is the first female immigrant appointed to the executive as executive director of the Pennsylvania Governor's Advisory Commission on Asian Pacific American Affairs. Sun worked for the government diplomatic agencies in both China and South Korea, and for three Fortune 120 international corporations in three countries that include China, South Korea, and the United States. In 2016, Sun collaborated with the Philadelphia City Council to organize the first ever City Council public hearing concerning the Asian Pacific American community in the history of Philadelphia. And she has been constantly advocating for grassroots and marginalized people. Stephanie earned a master's degree in journalism and media management in China. She studied for her PhD in international relations in South Korea as the first in her family to go to college Sun felt privileged to become a tenured college senior lecturer in Asia, and she believes education can help people achieve a better life. Welcome to PDE Presents, Stephanie. Hi, Secretary Ortega. Thank you so much for having me with you. Fantastic. So, Stephanie, for those who might be meeting you virtually for the first time, what is something that you might be willing to share with our listeners about who you are as a professional and how you approach your work? Thank you, Secretary Ortega. Thank you so much for inviting me to PDE present. It's my great honor to have this conversation with you and all the listeners. Hi, everyone. As Secretary Oteka mentioned, my name is Stephanie Sung, and I serve as the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Governor's Advisory Commission on Asian Pacific American Affairs. For the listeners who don't know us yet, The Pennsylvania Governor's Advisory Commission on Asian Pacific American Affairs is the Commonwealth Advocate Agency for Asian Pacific American Pennsylvanians and is dedicated to ensuring that the Commonwealth government is accessible and accountable to the diverse Asian Pacific American communities in Pennsylvania. The commission is composed of about 30 community leaders with diverse backgrounds from different regions across PA. I'm very happy to be in this conversation today because education has always been my passion. I went to a normal university for my bachelor degree, trained to be a teacher. As the first in my family to go to college, I feel privileged to become the tenured college senior lecturer in Asia. I have experience in higher education and adult continuing education in multiple settings in three countries, China, South Korea, and the US. I love being a teacher an advocate and educator, a student, and an advocate for education. Education is a lifelong work. And based on my definition of education, I have been always working on education in many different ways, including my current job, educating the community, educating ourselves, and also educating stakeholders, government agencies, organizations, and other communities about our community. In China, there's a saying about education that it takes 10 years to grow trees, but 100 to cultivate people. Education is the root and the future of people and of society. So I always appreciate every educator and person who works on education very, very much. I approach my work by listening to people and asking questions. 
I listen to people in order to understand their problems and pain points and do what I can to try to help. I work with many different Asian Pacific communities with the goal of trying to improve their lives, their participation in the society and their representation in the government. These Asian Pacific communities are composed of members who hail from more than 50 different countries with very diverse backgrounds, language, and cultures. Listening and understanding is the key to fostering trust and building cooperation. Thank you. Stephanie, I really do appreciate the insight that you provided our listeners to really get to know, first of all, your philosophy and approach to leading. I do think that the quote that you shared about 10 years to grow a tree, but 100 years to culture it, to, to change the culture of individuals is really an important understanding of how this is a critical investment that as educators, we must make for our students. I also wanna transition us now to think about and reflect on the past year, if not even longer than that, Stephanie. There's no doubt that it has changed the educational landscape forever, particularly in the areas that both you and I are familiar with, which is higher education. I wonder if you can share with our listeners what you feel is one of the most pressing matters in the field of education. Thank you for the important question. Since my work is serving and advocating for the Asian Pacific American community, so I would like to talk about the pressing matters impacting the Asian Pacific American community. To talk about the Asian Pacific American community, I would like to start with some basic facts about this community. Asian Pacific American community is the fastest growing community in the United States. Almost 40% of new immigrants arrives in recent years are Asian. Almost 70% of international students in the United States are also from Asia. Asian Pacific American community is also the only community which is majority immigrants. Two thirds of Asian Americans and one sixth of Pacific Islanders are foreign born. Most Asian Americans immigrated post 1965 because of the Immigration Act of 1965. So we're among the youngest communities in this country. This brings this community some unique barriers. And the number one barrier is the language barrier. In Pennsylvania, 79% of Asian Pacific Americans speak a language other than English at home. 47% speak English less than very well. For every three Pennsylvanians who speak little to no English, one is Asian Pacific American. Therefore, for the Asian Pacific American community, language access is always one of the most impressive matters in the field of education. During this past year with the pandemic, this matter has been brought to the forefront. With the dependence on reading and self-study and much less time in the classroom, students who are struggling with English and do not speak English at home are at a serious disadvantage as compared to their classmates who are native English speakers. Parents who have limited English proficiency or no English proficiency cannot help their children with their homework or participating education of their children. In addition, we would hope to see more information about non-European immigrants to the US taught in schools. We feel this would help improve understanding of diverse communities and reduce tensions related to race. The US is a country of immigrants, yet classically, school history curriculums have not really addressed how and why immigrants, especially minority immigrants, arrived in this country, how immigrants were welcomed, and in many cases not welcomed, 
and the many contributions immigrants have made to help build this country. Many of these issues that drive current events of today are built upon many complex issues of yesterday. Without the firm understanding of the events that build the history of this country, our young people will not be prepared for or understand the issues that need to be addressed for the country to go to grow and move forward. Immigration and the immigrant communities make up the tapestry that is the United States. To continue to weave this great tapestry, we need to foster a deep understanding of all of those who built this country. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And I do appreciate you sharing your perspective on some of the challenges. I appreciate that you started off with sort of one of the most pressing issues around language, but really uh, expanded to place emphasis on the importance of understanding historical precedents. How did we get here? How did some of these challenges manifest from the past? And how does our, the way that we meaningfully engage with immigrant populations, particularly the Asian Pacific American population, how is this rooted on some of those past relationships? And I think that's really important for us to begin to understand as educators, but also as individuals who are building curriculums to teach future generations in the classroom. For me, Stephanie, all these things sound like equity is a lens that's deeply embedded in the work that you do, the way that you approach the work and the way that you frame some of the problems. I wonder if you might share with our listeners, how does your equity lens inform and frame the work that you do each day? Thank you for the question. In my mind, equity is trying to achieve the best possible outcome for each and every individual. In my day-to-day -day work, I focus on the individual, seeing them as human beings, not just data, numbers, or concept of a group on the piece of paper. Knowing our day-to-day -day work is impacting each human being's life, family, future, and the community and the people around them. And then frame my work as trying to achieve the best possible outcome for each and every individual. Although our work is to advise on policy level, I always remind myself that those policies are impacting the lives of people, people who are very diverse individuals from different backgrounds, facing different challenges and with different needs. In my mind, to recognize, to identify, to respect, and to address people's differences is the starting point of equity. Then we need the wisdom and strategies to connect the dots and the creativity and effort to build solutions, to try our best every day, to meet the, to meet the needs of people with limited resources that we have in our hands. Thank you. Stephanie, I really do appreciate you sharing with us your approach to equity and how it informs the work that you do each and every day. I think you've pointed out a few things that I want our listeners to really understand uh, about the importance of what you shared with us. The first is understanding individuals as human beings beyond the data or the data points that they represent in our discussions and our decisions. And I think that's really important but also what you point out in terms of understanding the nuances and differences that exist among certain groups. I think as someone like myself coming at it from a Latinx, from a Latinx male perspective, uh, thinking about what's embedded in nuances when you think about Asian, Asian American and Asian Pacific Islanders, all embedded into sort of the overarching work of the commission that you represent. And these differences are important because each one of them is informed by the lived experience of those human beings that you represent in your work. So I really do appreciate you sharing that perspective. I wonder if you can share with our listeners uh, some examples of what you might be doing with your team, with your commissioners and other folks that you're working with on the commission uh, to break down barriers and reconstruct systems with equity at the forefront of this work. Thank you. 
as mentioned earlier, language barrier is one of the biggest barriers that the Asian Pacific American community faces. So we try to improve language access for minority communities where English is not their primary language. This is one of the policy goals of our commission is working on. And we also try to break down racial barriers through education to increase awareness and understanding to break down the barrier where people are seen as other. One of our goals is to add Asian American history in the K-12 education curriculum in public schools. The absence of Asian American history and the contributions of Asian Americans to the United States and the Commonwealth from the K-12 education curriculum is one of the main reasons for Asian Americans being regarded as other and one of the roots of anti-Asian hate and discrimination. The discrimination and violence against Asian Americans has been in the US for more than 170 years. And the uptick during the COVID pandemic has finally joined public and media attention to this problem. And this incident of hate are continuing to happen very often. We heard many times from our youth testimonies that they, be, they did not believe there was any Asian American history because they did not learn anything from their schools. And they believe there was not any Asian history for their parents. They were so proud of it once they learned it, sometimes just from their parents. Since the uptick of anti-Asian hate, the movement of mandating Asian American history in public school is happening in many states. In Illinois, July 9th, 2021, Illinois Governor J.B. Prisker signed legislation requiring that Asian American history be taught in public schools starting in the 2022 to 2023 school year. The Illinois Teaching Equitable Asian American History Act says the curriculum should include teaching of the efforts made by Asian Americans to advance civil rights, as well as their contributions to the arts and science and to the economic and cultural development of this country. We hope to make it happen in Pennsylvania too. Before achieving that goal, we started with our commission's Asian Pacific Culture Educational Resource Package this year to promote racial equity and exclusiveness through the culture and education approach, promoting positive acceptance of Asian Pacific American community through schools, teachers, and students. Our commission has been creating Asian Pacific Culture Educational Resource Package on major APA festivals and events for schools and educators. Starting with the Lunar New Year this year, which was celebrated by more than half of Asian Pacific American residents in Pennsylvania. Our package has been spread to multiple school districts, schools, educational agencies in different regions of PA and utilizing classes and educational activities during the festival season. And another major barrier that the Asian Pacific American community faces in the field of education is the barrier between APA parents and the school system. Many Asian immigrant community parents do not have the concept of engaging and participating their children's education by working with the schools and school districts through school boards, parent teacher associations, and other parents groups. They will be very engaged in their children's education, but in another way, not by working with the schools as partner in educating their parents, uh, in educating their children, sorry. 
plus the language barriers of the immigrant parents hampers their ability to work with the education system in this country. In the past year, we have been working on supporting and empowering APA parents groups in different regions, helping some establish a new organization, organizing activities and events, engaging their school district, school boards, and local community, and supporting APA parents running for school boards. Through this efforts on community organizing and education, we aim to break down barriers and improve equity between the school systems and the APA parents and families and the barriers between APA community and other communities. And through improving the APA community's participation and engagement in the system, we hope it can lead to more inclusive systems in the long term. The education system in Asia is so different from in the US, plus the whole societal structure and language. So even though immigrant parents want to support, help, and teach their children, they have nothing to offer. They have too little to offer compared to their children who are sitting in classrooms taught by their teachers, immigrant parents are even more behind than their children. And no one, te no one teaches the parents. Many immigrant parents say in their lives that their children are actually their teachers. Many immigrant parents feel sorry for their children for not being able to help them as much, but have no solution. Immigrant children do not receive a similar amount of support from their parents as their schoolmates receive from their local parents. Do we have programs or system to fill this gap for students from immigrant families? To fill those gaps is to build equity for students and their families in my mind. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And I really do appreciate your insight into what obviously is a complicated systemic uh, concern that you raised and really unpacked it for our listeners. It sounds to me like when you began this uh, to uh, talk about some of the things that maybe are uh, an impetus for why we celebrate the uh, Asian Pacific American uh, uh, immigrant sort of story, either through celebrations, really isn't enough, but it's a good entry point. When you think about um, the uh, folks coming around something like a Lunar New Year, uh, we've got to move beyond that. We've got to move into what you've outlined as part of your work as positive acceptance, and then moving into inclusion, which to me is the ultimate goal. I do hope that in Pennsylvania, we continue to advocate for the importance of making sure that everyone is reflected in the curriculum and pedagogy of our schools, because that's the only way that we're going to understand. And then I think for me, an important uh, uh, additional takeaway from what you share is that with the recent uh, growth in terms of immigrants coming in from Asia into um, the United States, we've got to understand that there is sort of a segmented approach into how they become part of the broader culture, right? Understanding language barriers, but also uh, navigating systems of education that differ entirely from uh, their home country coming into uh, the United States. And I think these are all important parts of the solution for all our listeners here who are thinking about how to approach this problem uh, in their respective uh, areas or uh, professions to make sure that we understand all the parts uh, that Stephanie has really laid out in terms of the complexity of this. I'd like to now uh, move to something that I think is really important, Stephanie, when we think about individuals who are taking on um, work of this magnitude. This work is never easy. It's definitely complicated and things like events that are coming out of the pandemic and some of the things that you've um, sort of laid out for our listeners around Asian hate that's emanating from these challenges. What advice would you have for individuals who are trying to follow in your footsteps 
to approach this work on how they may be able to maintain their own sort of mental health and well being as they approach some of these challenging concerns. Thank you, Secretary Ortega. As the first immigrant female appointed as the executive director of the Pennsylvania Governor's Advisory Commission on Asian Pacific American Affairs, I know it's very meaningful and encouraging not only to myself, but also to other immigrants. So I would like to take this opportunity to share my um, advice with immigrant community, especially, um, and whoever has an immigrant family. To start with, always be part of your community. Always be curious and respectful to people. Follow your heart, do the things that you think are right without thinking about reward and value your own life experience and identity and believe that it is the wisdom and treasure in your hand. Trust yourself. No matter how different you are from each other, believe that you are in American, you are American and there's a space for you, there's a place for you and there should be a place for you. Try to help as many people as possible. Please know that even the smallest support could change the direction of a person's life and have a profound impact on their family and their generations that follow. Thank you. Stephanie, I really do appreciate the insight that you provide us, uh, provided our listeners to really understanding and making sense of the experience. And I think the advice that you share with those listeners that at the beginning you framed as something important for those who may share an immigrant past such as yourself, but I think really resonates with everyone to always be part of your community, really be respectful and try to understand uh, the lived experience of others and for us to follow the heart, our hearts to do the right thing. I think that's extremely important. When I think of many of the many challenges that we have as leaders, and you're certainly one of those individuals that on behalf of the department, I want to say is someone who's really pioneering some changes in this space and much needed as well. And we're certainly uh, here as a department to offer up our support and assistance, but we want to also encourage our listeners to reach out to members who are either involved in the commission or are doing work directly related to this as we all collectively work to address some of the challenges that we face, not just in Pennsylvania, but in this country on making sure that everyone feels like they're part of, I think as Stephanie, you laid out so beautifully, the tapestry of the immigrant past of this country. Stephanie, thank you very much for joining us today. And let me personally add that it has been an absolute privilege to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me with you. I'm Noe Ortega. Thank you to all who joined us today for PDE Presents. Production and technical assistance provided by the Harrisburg branch of the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network.